Yeah, so uh, I did a little charity thing uh, with my NIL. Um, it's uh, with the Power 225. Uh, I just give majority of my money to uh, that and the cause. Uh, it's just, I love what they're doing over there. And I think with the position college players, football players, and college athletes in general are in, um, I don't know what to do with it, so I might as well you know, give it to somebody who needs it. So uh, I think it's a great opportunity to give back. And, uh, so you've been here for about 18 months, and obviously, the community here has embraced you, and you've embraced it as well. Just talk about the experience from, from a baseball perspective. What it's meant to you to be a part of this program? Yeah, so playing in front of LSU fans, there's nothing like it. Uh, ups and downs, uh, you guys let us know, and I love it. I love it. I love it. it, it, it um, yeah, uh, it's a lot different than where I came from, NC State. Um, playing in front of all these fans. I thought the Super Regional was one of the coolest moments of my life uh, with how everybody was just on top of us. Everybody was in the Tennessee series. I looked to my left at the student section. Every other second, somebody's getting arrested because I'm crazy. Right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's just definitely what God's been saying prepares you for the next level. And um, there's no so other people like it, and I love it. A little of us behind the scenes information about Tommy, we understand that he has adopted a new pet. Now, it's not your standard pet, it's not your, your dog or cat, Tommy. Tell us about your new pet and what makes it special. Yeah, so I got a bearded dragon over uh, October. Uh, his name's Draco, Draco the Drago. Um, I don't know what I was doing. My buddy sent me a video of me playing with a bearded dragon like from four years ago, and I made the impulse decision to go get one right away. But he's awesome. He just chills, doesn't do anything. Once I kind of honed in on like, you know, who am I as a pitcher, and what makes me really great, um, and then just doing things to make those two things even better, better, you know, my career is kind of taking off. So we're running out of time, but I have one more question because I think this is, uh, is important. Baseball is a game of failure. You go through a bunch of adversity. You talked about that you got to the crossroads and went to, you know, you went the right direction, right? You made some changes you need to make. You went from that to COVID. Right, which is, you know, COVID is obviously a pretty crazy situation. You have one of your better years in your career, and then you go through free agency the next year. And I, I got a firsthand look at this because I was, me and you were training together, and I got to kind of get a backdoor or you know, behind the scenes look at this. And you had opportunities, you had multi year deals for multiple teams. And you decide I'm going to take a one-year deal and bet on myself and go back to San Francisco and you have another, the next best year of your career. And you go to free agency again and you sign the deal with Toronto and you get to pick where you want it to go and you were one of the best right-handed pitchers in, in all of baseball in the free agent market. Two years before that, you didn't know if you were going to be playing baseball. You didn't know what job you were going to get. Talk about how you got through that adversity and what you had to do mentally because baseball is such a tough sport mentally. Um, and you went from one year not knowing what's gonna happen to two years later being the top right in the pitcher for agency. Yeah, I mean, a lot of conversations with my wife, you know, kind of trying to figure out like, do we want to, yeah, do, yeah, shout out to my wife, Taylor. Like Charles, fuck, fuck, uh, Carl Sutter. Oh, Daryl's special, I don't know about Daryl's special. Yeah, yeah, Daryl's special, I don't know over there, yeah. weird. Yeah, but, um, you know, lots of conversations with her, like, you know, do we want to do we want to be here? Or do we want to be all the way to San Francisco? And it's a long ways from here. You know, I got two kids now, and so you know, when they would travel to see me, that's it's a nine-hour travel day just for them to get there. You know, and then all the things that COVID brought, and, and just you know, the city of San Francisco during COVID was you know ground zero. You know, it was <laughs> shut down. Like they couldn't even get a sandwich from anywhere. So. Um, but just a lot of conversations and really just kind of betting on ourselves and you, you know you work so hard to get to that spot to, to get to free agency and so to be in a situation to where you, you almost you kind of have you know you have the cards in your hands so you kind of can decide for the first time um, in your career you know what direction you want to take and you know that's taking us to another country and that's in Canada so you know, it's super unique being one team that represents an entire country. And, um, you know, they're definitely hockey fans first, but, you know, they love the Blue Jays during the summertime. They love coming out to games. You know, they don't necessarily 
know that much about baseball, but um, you know, it's uh, it's great. I mean, it's awesome being in AL East. I spent my first six years of my career there, so you know, I know all those ballparks pretty well, and um, given up a lot of home runs and just about all of them. So you know, they're they're all pretty small. So yeah, it's not the greatest place to pitch, but you know. That's where you want to be. The AL East is, you know, the, the Power Five or the SEC of, of the Big League. So it's really cool. I know I speak for all the fans, and I speak for myself. Uh, I'm excited to watch the rest of your career unfold. I'm happy that I got to be a small part of it at LSU and then continue to be a part of it as your friend. Moving forward, and Jared feels the same way. Um, I wish I could have, I have a lot I want to talk about. We don't have enough time. We're getting kicked off of the stage. Y'all don't want to hear us, I'm going to let you have the last remarks, intro, Coach Jay Johnson, he's coming on after us, he's the man of the hour, you are the second man, I guess you are the man of the hour, you are the second man of the hour. Sorry, Dad, come on, Dad. You go, you go for it. Uh, yeah, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, being the guy from, from Denver, I, I came here, you know, to play baseball, but I stayed because of the people, and you know, if you're a freshman in this room, you've been able to get around and, and interact with people around here, you know, anybody in here will give you the shirt off their back and not even think twice about it. So that's really rare to find nowadays and that's, you know, why we have 120 tables or however many there are here and why this thing gets bigger every single year. But, you know, just kind of those young guys just kind of hone in on, you know, you represent an entire state and, and a lot of people that really care about this program and, doing things the right way but you know just want to uh, wanted to say that but you know this is the most important guy that we're all here to listen to and that's coach jay johnson of the uh, defending national champion of the